Okay, so hello and welcome to my uh, second video on uh, Unix. And just watching over the first one, I noticed a few factual errors in uh, the video. And so a quick Google search, well I noticed them after I did a quick Google search on Unix and I got to this site, excellent site, wonderful site, freeengineers.org forward slash learn Unix, yeah blah blah, I'll put it in the description box below. And it's basically got all this like factual information, you know, just syntax and stuff for Unix commands. And it's just great, so it's condensed into one quick little page that you can probably go through in, well, 10 minutes. And I do recommend you uh, get on here because not everything I say is maybe the best way it's uh, done. And you're probably the best teacher for yourself because, well, yeah. And seeing a few things I got wrong or not as correct would be like CD doesn't stand for current direct change directory, it stands for change current directory, which I thought was somewhat odd. CCD, yeah. And PWD stands for present work directory, which makes a lot more sense than what I said. And also looking at this, you can just type CD to get to your home directory. So for example, I'm here in uh, my home directory now, but I'll go to my documents. And instead of typing this, I could just type this. I honestly didn't know that until, well, that quick Google search. So yeah, you should actually go out and try to find information on Unix yourself because well, not everything people tell you is the perfect way. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm going to use this as a guide now <laughs> to uh, to explain. Uh, let's see. Um, I think today I'm going to cover permissions, file permissions, and uh, uh, let's see, and maybe this as well: moving, renaming, and copying files. Okay, so permissions, permissions, here we go. In our Unix, well, we have, just like every other real sy uh, file system, or whatever, we have our permissions for files. So, for example, if we, like, download a file off the internet, we might not want it to be executable. We, don't, we might not want the uh, person to actually physically be able to execute the file, because... Well, it might be dangerous, it might be a virus, it might be malware, something like that. So, there's an executable permission, which this X represents. And, well, I think the X represents it. Yeah, I, I do believe. And, uh, you may also want to keep files private. For example, if there's multiple users on your computer, you might just want the Cliff user to be able to uh, read it rather than the whole system. So any user on the farm uh, system. So permissions. Also you might only want a file to be read only. You might not want anyone to write to the file. If it's like a some sort of special I don't know, whatever. So let's see. Let's do examples, shall we? So I'm in my home directory. You can see that. And let's say I have a new file. It's, yeah, I'll make a new one. And I want to, whoops, we've got a CD to test. Okay, so let's clear that. So I don't have any files in here. You know what, I think I'll, I'll do this one first. Moving, renaming, copying, no, not sorry, editing, viewing, files. So with this I'll create some files and then I'll modify the permissions on them. All right, so let's see here. In Unix, you can do. Uh, there used to be an editor called Pico, which uh, was proprietary. It had a private owner or entity, whatever. So we couldn't actually be included in the uh, the public GNU one. So they had to make a clone of it, and they made a clone called Nano. So you might get the uh, the naming convention here. So with nano, you just type nano plus the file name that you want to edit. So I'm going to call it a file. Okay, so nano a file, and it'll bring me to this little editor. So 
here I can just write text. Just updates live. And you can do multiple lines, whatever. You can hit enter. Um, it behaves just like a normal text editor would, except without a mouse. But that's fine because you have the arrow keys to navigate. And well, this is all right. And now let's quickly get out of it. I hit Control X in the menu below. That gives you the, what you can do. And this little up thing stands for Control. So Control X brings you to a new menu. Do I want to save? Yes, I want to save the buffer. So I hit Y. What file do I want to call it? Name. A file's fine. There. Now hitting LS, I see that A file is there. Okay. And let's just say I just CD to this directory. I see there's a file called A file. Let's pretend I don't know what's in it. I want to see what's in it. Well, there's a command called cat. Now cat, like this file thing says, will dump a file to the screen in ASCII. So that means is it'll print out what's in the file in the ASCII uh, uh, standard. So cat A file. Now this is written in ASCII text, which means like the 128 letters, numbers in the table. I don't know how to describe it. And we see exactly what's in the file. This is what I wrote down in a uh, thing. And cat will print it out to the screen. Now turn it over. Let's say the file's really long. So, you know, let's make a new one. Let's see here, where can I go? Okay. I'll just go here. So I got this file, and you see it just a whole bunch of information has come out onto the screen, just printed out. But let's say I want to see the beginning of it. I don't want to have to retype it and, and do this. No, I only want to see the, this beginning part of it. Well, you can do that, and it's a file, a command called head, and head will give you what's referred to as head of the file and by that I mean the beginning of it so head file log dot text will print out the beginning bit of text oh, that's actually quite a lot oh no, no it's not, it's just this part okay so it's printed out the beginning part of it and there is a another command that's just like this, it's called tail and we'll do the opposite, it prints the end of it so I'll just quickly type that, and it gives me the end, the last few lines to the file. And let's see the uh, help. We might be able to select how much lines we want. Yeah, here we go. Hitting N, we can uh, specify how much lines. The default's 10. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Let's see what else is there. What else? Okay, so head and oh yeah, see look, n will t give us the amount of numbers. All right. Uh, yeah, you could use these are the other editors, vi and uh, emacs, and vi is just a crazy editor. It's just really, I've no idea how to use it. I mean, I couldn't care less about it actually. I'm sure if you do a, do a quick Google search or a YouTube search, you'll find a tutorial on it. I'm not even going to go on this. It's just, I don't see the point. It's ancient. Emacs, uh, well, I could say the same, but I do see quite a lot of people still using it. I don't even have Emacs on my system. Okay. I'm sure I have VI. I think everyone has VI. And you can just see from this, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, I don't know how to save it. Just get out of it. I don't even know how to get out of it. Okay. That's terrible. There we go. Had to force close it. Alright. So, basically, if I ever wanted an advanced editor, I wouldn't go VI. i just get, like, a graphical one. Like, really. Alright, so, what was I? Less? Yes, you can write less, and instead of using it like this, like uh, whatever, and then doing that, you could just write less, and then the file name. So, far log, and we can do that. And it's the same thing as before. We hit Q again to leave it. Okay. So that's editing 
viewing and editing files. So to view, you type cat. To edit, use an editor to um to well uh, what's it called? Edit the file. So let's go back to our test directory. All right. So if you're seeing this, all right. So if you're seeing this, uh, what's it called? I've decided that after just doing the permissions file uh, part of the video, it got way too complicated. I didn't do it very well, so I'm just, I'm gonna cut the permissions part out of this tutorial video. It's already getting long enough anyway. I'll come back to file permissions in another video. Okay, so righto. See you then.